In this video, we're going to discuss information systems and their origin, and show how these kinds of systems can only be the result of intelligent causes and not blind physical forces or chance. In addition, these same evidences can be used to show that the genome was likely the, cause, the result of an intelligent cause rather than blind physical forces itself. In this video, we're going to be primarily considered with the origin of the information systems themselves and not the origin of the data or the messages that they contain. The question of whether or not uh, physical causes can add information to an existing information system will be addressed in a later video. Information systems have several properties that require them to be created by intelligent agents. First of all, information systems are symbolic. That is, there is no physical or chemical link between what is what the message is and the medium on which it is written. For instance, take this sheet of paper. There is nothing about the properties of the paper or the ink that require the message to come out looking like this. The message was imposed on the outside. Now, it's not that the physical properties of the paper and the ink are unimportant. In fact, they are very important so that they are able to have a message encoded on them. But you can't tell just based on, on knowing that there is going to be paper and there is going to be ink, anything about what the message is going to look like. Um, the same information could be encoded in a digital computer, in Morse code, or written in sand. The message itself is distinct from the properties of the physical matter of what, on which it is written. In order for the message to convey meaning to any person or system, there must exist a mechanism which can read, interpret, and act on the message. Not only that, there must be some method for the message to come into existence. Without the message, the machinery is useless, and without a reader, the message is useless. In addition, the message and the reading system must be linked for the message to make any sense. The message must be written in the alphabet, syntax, and grammar that the reading system machinery expects in order for it to be properly processed. Now the only known creator of information systems are intelligent agents. Since information systems require the message and the message reading system to be simultaneously present to perform any function, it is reasonable to infer that the creation of such systems require playing ahead. Physical laws are incapable of forethought, and chance doesn't plan ahead either. This leaves the only possible mode of causation for a coding system or an information system to be an intelligent agent. This agrees with our experience as well. All coding systems, all information systems, which have been observed to come into existence did so through what we would consider an intelligent agent. So how do we know that a system really is an information system? Could it be possible that there might be systems that look like information systems that have sequences of symbols written on a medium, but that aren't actually information systems? Well, it turns out there are several key features of information systems that we can use to distinguish them from non-information systems. First of all, information systems have alphabets. That is, the English language has an alphabet, A, B, C, D, and spaces, commas, punctuation marks, um, although those aren't technically part of what we consider the English alphabet, those are considered part of the alphabet in an informational sense. Likewise, Hebrew, Greek, French, German, all of them have alphabets. What's important to consider within an alphabet is that there is a fixed set of symbols which have meaning. Now, this might be a small number of symbols, as in English, or it might be an incredibly large number of symbols, as in Chinese or Japanese. But the system must be the set of symbols must be a fixed set in order for it to be considered an alphabet. Second, the order in which the alphabet occurs within the medium must not be dictated by the physical properties of either the alphabet or the medium. Third, the information must be able to be copied. And this means that a system must be able to distinguish between members of an alphabet and members that are not of on the alphabet. Fundamentally, there must exist a device that could distinguish between the medium and the message and the environment, and therefore bring, make reliable copies of the message 
and not copy other parts that are not part of the message. Finally, the information must be able to be read by a system that understands the message, not in terms of its physical chemical properties, although those are important, but rather in terms of its semantic rules, meaning that um, while physics doesn't prescribe the order of the alphabet, um, the physics independent configuration of the alphabet is able to be acted on by an agent or system. Think of an English sentence like, eat an orange. The sequence of the letters is not prescribed from physics of the letters themselves. However, they obey a formal pattern. That is, there are rules that govern them. There is a verb followed by a direct object. Now, there is no physical link that causes that to be necessary. It is a formal link that causes that to be necessary. A person or system can read and understand the meaning in terms of the abstract rules that apply, rather than by the chemistry of the medium itself. Likewise, as we mentioned before, there must exist a system which is capable of reading the message itself and not to be confused by the medium or the environment in which the message resides. It must be able to determine which parts of the given physical configuration are parts of the message in the alphabet and which parts are not, and be able to copy the appropriate pieces. When copying a written message, for instance, only the, only the letters are copied, and not the page and not the air surrounding it. Therefore, the copying mechanism must be able to separate out the meaningful from the unmeaningful. There are many reasons to believe that an information system must be the result of an intelligent cause and not simply physical ones. First of all, as we mentioned earlier, the many parts of the communication system must be present all at the same time for a message to make sense, and the message itself is meaningless without the system. This indicates that it must be coordinated and planned, and physics is incapable of forward planning. Second, the messages contained with the information system are abstract. That is, they are unrelated to the local chemistry, and in fact require an alphabet which can maintain its independence from the physical, physics and chemistry of the medium. This indicates that the information system is based on conceptual rules, not physical rules and thus require an agent which is capable of conceptualizing, and physics is unable to conceptualize. Now we can take these rules and apply them to any system that we see and determine if in fact it is an information system, and if so, we have good evidence that an intelligent agent was responsible for it coming into being. If we apply this set of criteria to the genome, what do we find? First of all, the genome has an alphabet which consists of four symbols. We designate these symbols A, C, G, and T, named for the different types of nucleotides which are present. This is a fixed set of nucleotides and therefore represents a true alphabet. Second, the order of the alphabet is not determined by the physical properties of the genome's letters. That is, A, C, G, and T can occur anywhere within the DNA strand. There's no physical rules forcing them in any p particular position or order. Third, the genome can be copied, and the copying mechanism recognizes that it is the alphabet and not the surrounding chemistry which needs copying. Finally, the genome can be read and interpreted by a system that understands its sequencing in terms of formal rules, i.e. genes code for proteins, and also regulatory information which is read and obeyed by the cell. Therefore, the evidence leads us to conclude that the genome is a true information system. Because it is an information system, the evidence points to the genome being the result of an intelligent cause or causes, and not solely the result of physical forces alone.